Welcome back to another episode of Going to IEU. I'm your host, Eden Adelius, and I'm here today to talk about homesickness with uh, Luna, a fourth year communication student. Welcome. Hello, thank you. We can start with, um, with yourself. Tell me a little bit about uh, where you're from, where's your home, what are you studying? Okay. So my name's Luna. I'm a fourth year communication and digital media student. I'm 21 years old and I'm half uh, Spanish, half Indonesian. So my mom's Spanish and my dad's Indonesian. But um, I grew up my whole life in Bali. So that's what I would consider to be home. Beautiful. So in Spain, as you're half Spanish, do you feel homesickness? During first year, especially, I actually felt very homesick. Um, it got to a point where I was like, I'm going to drop out because I couldn't handle it. Um, because I've lived my whole life in Bali and when I came to Spain, it was such a new world. Because I only came here to, you know, visit family, see like my parents' as friends and stuff like that. And so when I came, it was like a completely different world. It was starting a new chapter. It was like, oh my God, university. Oh my God, Spain. Like, I've never lived here. So it was very... Um, intimidating but exciting at the same time so what's the idea of spain and living here before coming here and during living here before coming here i always saw spain as like a second home um it was kind of like the place i would go for a summer holiday to see my family see a couple of friends but it wasn't in madrid or segovia so when i came here when i was in segovia it was a completely new world because i visited once and that was like a month before uni and it was just i don't know like i got here and i was like oh my god like i'm actually in university now so you're kind of nervous i was very nervous but also before coming to ie um i actually went to an ie experience so i met a lot of people there and that helped me a lot i met two other girls who are actually my classmates since first year until now and we got along super well and it was great to kind of have like a few people that you already knew before coming in because if not it's very intimidating but even then like I know a lot of people who came in without knowing anyone and they still with all the freshers week all the events and everything you get to meet people so that was also super helpful. So I kind of get that meeting people and knowing people will help you with homesickness Yeah, yeah. I think, for example, I was um, really homesick and I felt very alienated, if that makes sense. I felt like a random person in my own country because I grew up my whole life in Bali. I'm very, I'm much more Indonesian than Spanish, I would say, in like my mindset and everything. And so when I came here, I felt so out of place in my own country because, for example, my friends... There, I have a lot of Spanish friends and we'd just be talking and they'd be talking about like some random Spanish singer and I'm like, I have no clue who that is. And they'd be like, oh, bueno, pues. You know? And I'm like, okay, great. And that happened a lot. So I just felt like, oh my God, I don't like know these mm-hmm. you know artists. The references. Yeah, like yeah. I don't know these references. And I was like, oh my God, I'm such a fake Spanish. <laughs> and then... But I wouldn't call it fake though. It's like the culture evolved mm-hmm. from time to time like yeah. me being Swedish and having lived there for the past three years I don't think I will be able to get the references yeah um, so how did you deal with that did you try to understand the references or um, yeah I mean it was also something that happened a lot like people would be like oh where are you from and I'm like oh I'm half Spanish half Indonesian and they're like oh you don't look Spanish I'm like yeah I know don't worry people tell me that all the time mm-hmm. <laughs> and so kind of what I did was just like I would, I like kind of took a different approach. I started asking my friends, I was like, oh, like, who is that? And they'd like tell me about him. They were super helpful as well. They would tell me about the person they were talking about or like whatever song they'd play for me and we'd just start like jamming all together. Or like another thing that helped me a lot with homesickness was also like, I have a lot of friends um, who are like Indian, Nepali, Malaysian from you know, that Asian region. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to also get together with them and just be like, okay, let's have Indian today. Let's watch a movie about like, I don't know, some Asian movie, you know? So it was nice to have a little community because in IE there aren't many Indonesians. So that was kind of our little Asian getaway community. You get to reach out more to regional rather than the US country. country, Yeah, um, because it was very hard. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so how did you find that at IE? 
is it easy for you to uh, socialize with people or how did you find um, your friends to help you out yeah well there's a lot of like different groups at IE one that really helped me a lot was a mentorship society so I came in and I was a mentee and I had a mentor and she helped me a lot with like adjusting with more of the academic stuff and then I started meeting people through like mutual friends I was also in a residence I was in factory in first year in Segovia right in Segovia and I think living in a residence in first year is super important because that's where you meet people from everywhere you know I it was so random because I ended up running into um a friend of mine from back home who I've known for like years I ran into his best friend who's also Spanish Indonesian and I was like I know you and he was like I know you too so it was very like coincidental um and definitely freshers week helped a lot there's a lot of events that you can go to meet new people like in first year we had a massive event at Casa de la Moneda and there were the coolest games and the coolest activities and the amazing giveaways and that was super exciting but IE actually offers a lot of op- la, la, la. IE offers a lot of opportunities for you to meet people and nevertheless like you're going to class with them you know so like you still meet people in class you run into people at the hallway when you go partying you meet everyone especially in Segovia and i think that is a important part of dealing with homesickness right to reach out to people find uh, similar minded and even different minded because ie is very diverse right yeah i agree um there are, as you said ie is super diverse there are people from all parts of the world there are people who have lived in like 10 different countries in their entire life so it's not a place that you would it makes sense that like sometimes you'd feel alone and super homesick but in reality everyone's kind of on the same page um we're all first years you know we're all just entering this random completely new chapter in our life of university that everyone's so excited but so nervous about but everyone's on the same boat this is something that i tell a lot to first years that we're all in the same place like we all started out from the same place you know we're all going to graduate from the same place everyone gets homesick all the time it's completely normal um so reaching out to just classmates friends anyone from back home your parents literally anyone is super helpful in trying to keep your mind off of it sometimes and making the most of what you have here now because once you leave you'll eventually be like oh I'm gonna miss I it. miss Spain exactly so you need to make the most of like where you are at every single time i think that's a great tip for a student incoming and also current mm-hmm. ones so i'm wondering have you ever felt a homesickness and how did you personally deal with it yeah i felt very homesick as i said in first year um it was like the whole of the first semester because it was just a completely new experience you know my parents were on the other side of the world in bali um time zone differences were horrible so i felt very alone sometimes and then i was very in my zone whenever i was homesick but then eventually like i had friends who really helped me get out of that place and they were like oh yeah like let's go i don't know let's go do something let's go to the mm, mountains behind ie in segovia you know and you just sit there watch the sunset take pictures because we're calm students that's all we do And so, you know, just kind of getting out of that mindset and asking your friends to help you because if you do it alone, it's like impossible. You need to tell friends like, "Hi, I'm really homesick. Please get me out, you know. Let's do something." And that's super helpful and just also not disregarding the fact that you're homesick. Mhm. Keeping in How mind me with that. Like pretty much keeping in mind like, "Yes, I'm homesick." And not kind of going down into a spiral of oh my god I don't know what to do with it you know like be aware yes homesickness is completely normal I know so many people who have experienced it in first year and second year and third year and fourth year I experience it sometimes as a fourth year and just like saying okay what should I do you know not just leading down the spiral like I said before and taking action do whatever you want that you think will make you feel better maybe go to a cuisine and mm-hmm. I love doing that I actually live um two minutes away walking from the Indonesian restaurant so you can so go there at any time and eat whenever home I'm food. homesick yeah. I text all the IE Indonesians and I'm like guys 
let's go. And then it's like all of us there. So it's really nice to just surround yourself with people from back home as well, but also with anyone and try to keep yourself out of that loophole mm-hmm. of being homesick. So how would you describe homesickness? Oof. Like how do you identify it? I don't know. It's just this feeling where you just miss being home so much wherever home is and you feel so helpless and just demotivated to do anything because all you're thinking about is home and like the more you think about it like i said before you just go into this continuous spiral and you're like i'm so homesick i'm so homesick i'm so homesick and it's just never ending Mm -hmm. so i don't know it's a hard situation to get out of sometimes I know a lot of people in first year who actually dropped out because they were super homesick. Like literally a month later, they were like, "Um, I can't. And they went home. But, you know, that's kind of like giving up. And I feel like you can get out of that mindset and that spiral. I mean, if anyone can do it, you can do it as well. So definitely. definitely and keep I think going. one of the biggest uh factor to homesickness is uh, culture shocks, right? Yes. Not feeling like you're belonging in, in Spain or mm-hmm. wherever you ended up. And uh, did you feel that way when you came to Spain? Like, even though you're half Spanish, like we talked about this earlier, like you didn't understand the preference, like the the references. But what more culture shock did you feel you encountered? And how do you feel like a um, new incoming student, like how should they approach it? How should they deal with it? Do you have any tips for them? Yeah, I did feel a massive culture shock, even though I'm half Spanish. But I know, for example, a lot of my um, non-Spanish friends, one thing they struggled a lot was with the fact that people don't speak English in Spain. The majority of people don't speak English in Spain. And so it was horrible for them because they would go to a supermarket and be like, what's onion? And they'd like have to Google translate it. And, you know, in the first weeks of uni, some of them didn't like have a SIM card yet because for a SIM card, you needed a bank and for a bank, you needed an ID and for an ID, you couldn't get your knee. So everything was like chaotic for them and I felt super bad. And so they'd be like, what's an onion? You know, like the mm-hmm. simplest of things, even like buying a bottle of water, it was like a uh, struggle that? for them because uh-huh. they're like, what's water in Spanish, you know? And so I personally didn't have to struggle with that, thank God, because I speak um Spanish. But I know a lot of people who were struggling for a long time and they would be like they would ask me uh, my international friends they'd be like Luna what's like water and I'm like agua and they're like okay thank you and they'd be like una agua please (laughs) or like whatever you know (laughs) so do you feel like those friends have uh, excelled in the Spanish over the past years yes definitely like now some of them go to their knee appointments all alone and like they only text me to like translate one little word little word and I'm like proud of you guys you know like it's nice to see them progress as well considering how much they struggled in first year but I think that learning Spanish is super important considering you're living in Spain because if not you don't like learn the culture like you're coming to Spain you're studying in Spain learn Spanish even though your university is in English to just know the culture and understand and feel not at home but just feel at ease you know, because you're trying to learn something new. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. It's also a skill that you will bring with you even though you leave mm-hmm. Spain after four years. And it's Spanish. Like, Spanish is a massive language in the world, you know, like, might as well go for it. You can speak with a lot of new people. Exactly. You can speak with all of South America. Go for it. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so changing topic a little bit. Um, Another factor for homesickness, I think, is overwhelming, feeling Mm -hmm. overwhelming of the task and schoolwork. And that links back to managing your time. Mm -hmm. How have uh, four years at IE taught you how to manage your time? Um, I mean, let's see. Um, I feel like at the beginning of every semester... It's always very easygoing. And you're like, I have all the time in the world. I'm going to join a football team. I'm going to join the coding club. I'm going to join this. And then once you're like a month in, you're like, oh, my God, I can't do this. But I don't know. I just like I like to have a schedule of when everything's due. Like I have a sticky notes on my laptop that's like deadlines meeting at this time. Um, Thesis proposal at this date, you know. I like to keep myself organized and have everything in mind. 
Um, and it seems like you visualize it too. Just yeah. Taking notes right in your face. When yeah, you yeah, open so your computer, you know what to do. the first thing I see. Like I turn my computer on and it's like deadlines in capital and red and like bold. And I'm like, yes, Luna, get it together. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like how? So keeping the what you need to do in mind is important to like not be um, overwhelmed with the task. But that can also be overwhelming. Yeah. Because then if you only focus on the schoolwork, then... You don't have time for your friends, your safety yeah. net. I think you need to have a good balance of multiple things. So, for example, being on top of your schoolwork. And then also, you know, we all like to be social. You know, we're all in university. We're here to meet new people. Um, socializing is also super important. But also having time for yourself, I think, is super important. And I've learned that throughout um university you know obviously our social batteries run out at one point it's important to just sit and just relax by yourself to kind of have like a good well-being and not always feel overwhelmed because you have a time to de-stress um so i think a mix of those three would be the ideal way to kind of be on top of everything have great time management but also have enough time to see your friends and be social so yeah and i think that's the idol but we are falling in and out of that all the time mm -hmm. for sure so at being here four years now how do you feel ie have helped you with managing your time to when you feel homesickness to uh, meeting new friends so like i said in first year um obviously freshers week that's what first years look forward to the most um it's honestly the greatest way to meet new people like i remember knowing two people before freshers week and those were those were like the from experience. my e experience yeah and like a few others people from factory that i just ran into and going to a bunch of events in freshers week and that's how you kind of start meeting people and also we had like a massive um scavenger hunt between various degrees in my first year and so we met people from madrid we met people from like um different bachelors and it was super nice because it's not only people from class and also joining clubs is another way to meet people for example i was in the women's football club in segovia and i met a lot of people there that i'm still like in contact today like one of them is someone who i'm really close to so it's nice to just Get, getting yourself involved getting yourself involved in many different activities is definitely one great way to meet new people and trying different stuff out yeah be open to the variety of Everything. people that are here as well trying out new things like step out of your comfort zone i know it's like cliche and like the typical thing that everyone says but definitely you know you're in university you're only going to live your bachelor's degree once so just take every opportunity that you can get out of your comfort zone do whatever you want obviously don't be stupid you know but you know just like join clubs meet new people and you definitely won't regret it because you can meet like there are so many people at ie that are amazing like i'm still close to a lot of people i've met in first year and like when i graduate in july i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna do without you guys like it's sad it's heartbreaking but that's what it is you know it's university you only live it, live it once the bachelors so make the most of it so i have a follow-up question on that mm -hmm. because you lived first two years in segovia and then moved to madrid yeah do you feel the homesickness increased or decreased coming to madrid i think in my case it was a bit different because i wasn't exactly two years in segovia and two years in madrid when covid started in second year yeah in March 2020, I was like, I don't want to be here. COVID's going up like crazy. So I flew home. Mm. And I actually only came back this October. So, so you've been home for yeah a year or so? A year and a half. A so I was half. home for a year and a half. So the homesickness now, obviously, <laughs> like I was spending a lot of time home. So I wasn't homesick. But now that I'm back, I'm kind of like, oh, no. I'm homesick. And, like, I wanted to go back, for example, this winter. But because of COVID restrictions, I needed to quarantine for two entire weeks in Jakarta. So I was like, I'm not going to go home. Mm -hmm. So obviously the homesickness is kind of creeping back. But 
I don't know. I think just like surrounding yourself with people who mean a lot to you and just helping them, helping you get out of that spiraling hole of of homesickness is super important. Super important. So it's kind of a two chapters and then a big home chapter yeah. in between. Um, so there's a big difference between Segovia and Madrid, right? In terms of mm-hmm. how you meet people. Uh, do you feel like during this year you have met a lot of new people that help you with homesickness and... Is the process different? Yeah. I mean, Segovia is a very community-oriented space, I'd say. Um, it's a tiny... It's it's a town, you know? It's a very small town. Uh, everywhere you go, you'll run into someone. Really depends on who, where you're from. I'm from a <laughs> tiny town. Um, so Segovia for me was gigantic. Really? Because my town is 10,000 people. Okay. In the middle of the forest in Sweden, so... Segovia was that like, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, Bali's pretty big, so. Yeah. But it got to a point where, like, you would go to Care for Express to buy, like, I don't know, like, whatever, a bottle, a can of Coke. And you'd run into everyone at IE, and it was like, yeah. oh, my <laughs> God, I can't even go out in my PJs. Like, it got to a point where it was like, oh, God. But I, I don't know, I really like the environment because you would run into people and you would feel comfortable. You would feel safe. And obviously Madrid is very 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 different to that because madrid is massive it's a massive city you want to see a friend and you have to plan like an hour in advance to Mm -hmm. get to theirs if you're on opposite sides of madrid but i feel like the university experience is still there like you go into uni and you run into everyone you know you see first years second years third years fourth years fifth years you see everyone you see the staff you see the professors we're all kind of in this little building all together (laughs) So the community um, experience is still there. Obviously not as big as Segovia is. And also during my last semester, I was actually going to go on exchange, but it got canceled because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So I did electives and I met people from so many different like degrees that now I'm still like friends with them, you know. So it was nice to not just be with your class 24-7 and just meet people from different degrees and just have classes with them, just like with the IE modules in first year, second year, third year. So it was nice. So do you have any any tips or recommendations for current student or incoming student from Segovia or and freshers even, how to uh, deal with homesickness here in uh, Madrid especially? Like where do you meet those people here Mm -hmm. in the tower Um, and uh, maybe places around Madrid where you can invite friends or meet new friends? Yeah. So, obviously, Madrid is completely different to Segovia. But um, I know that in the tower, there's like a wellness resting meditation room. I don't know what it's called. Um, But it's literally just a couch and you just sit there and relax. Like you just have time to disconnect from everything that you're doing. And I think that's really important to just like focus on yourself for a little bit. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in the tower. (laughs) But There's also, plenty of spaces to explore here. Yeah, it's yeah. massive. Um, and also just any couch anywhere, you know, just like taking time to yourself, even at the tower. Like even if, I don't know, one day you're like, oh, I'm going to go to Retiro. Retiro is an amazing place to just sit there, just look at the birds, just look at the lake with all the boats and the people in it, you know, like it's a great place to just disconnect or even bring your friends with you. Like um, my roommates and I, a few weeks ago, we went to the boat thing the paddle boat thing in the middle of the lake Mm -hmm. and it was great to like just see nature because you know i feel like madrid is very it's a city you know so it's very just buildings everywhere so retiro is a really nice place to just relax you could bring a book Mm. sit there it's a gem i love retiro it's amazing there's also two more parks um, as far as i know Mm -hmm. um casa del campo like around lago you take Mm. the metro line 10 yeah. Uh, you get there in a couple of minutes. And then there's also Templo de Depot next mm-hmm. to Plaza de España, um, which is also a nice park to run in. And there's a beautiful little cafe there in the sun. Yeah. Um, I would recommend that. There are a lot of places that you can go. For example, like even if you just want a day where you're like, you know what, I'm going to go crazy today. Go to the amusement park. The amusement park is amazing. I went recently with a few friends and it, Wow. Like, we went on the same ride so many times. But definitely just... Connect to your inner kids. Yeah. Yeah. Connect, just 
surrounding yourself with people who you know will support you and get you out of that mindset i think is very important and also taking the time to disconnect and just breathe you know if mm -hmm. that makes sense it does so i can imagine connecting with uh, other regional uh, ie students mm -hmm. was a big uh, a big help for you yeah i feel like that is what we're doing as well with uh, my club nordic club is mm -hmm. kind of connecting the regional kind of having a, a little family even though you're not always surrounded by them you know they're still there yeah i really like that because i think like you said one way of solving homesickness is to surround yourself with people from home mm -hmm. and obviously that might be a bit more difficult here like in first year i knew like three indonesians that was it But now it's definitely the Indonesian community has definitely expanded and there's like 11, 12 of us. So every once in a while we're like, okay, Indonesian dinner, you know, and we just like kind of reminisce mm -hmm. on like memories from back home and everything. And it's really nice because you feel in a very safe space. So I love what you guys are doing. That's amazing. I think that's so important as well. And I think that's... uh There's different uh, regional clubs here too that I... Yeah. I know the club is just one year old now, but there's this... Um, The China Club, there's the America Club. I think the North America Club is also starting. Mm -hmm. um, I had some rumors about that. There's a Nepali Club. I think there's an Indian Club as well. Like there are endless. There's no Indonesian Club. Might think of getting the Indos together and starting that up. Actually, yeah. <laughs> so if anyone's listening and is Indonesian, hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me at da 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 da. Exactly. Beautiful. Um, do you have any final words to? Uh, student at IE or incoming student when it comes to homesickness how would you wrap it up we're all on the same boat honestly we're all just coming to IE we're all lost puppies who have just graduated high school <laughs> and are like oh my god university it's so intimidating uh we're all on the same page um and honestly the IE community is great for fostering like just meeting new people and there are people from all parts of the world there's definitely a group of people that you can connect with super well but it's important to step outside of your comfort zone to meet these new people and just live the most of your university experience as you can that's all i can say beautiful so thank you luna for coming here today and for this conversation super nice uh, meeting you of course it was A pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you everyone who was tuning in today. Looking forward to the next episode. Bye.